Feminist theory is the extension of feminism into theoretical, fictional, or philosophical discourse. It aims to understand the nature of gender inequality. It examines women's social roles, experience, interests, chores, and feminist politics in a variety of fields, such as anthropology and sociology, communication, psychoanalysis, home economics, literature, education, and philosophy. Feminist theory focuses on analyzing gender inequality. Themes explored in feminism include discrimination, objectification, especially sexual objectification, oppression, patriarchy, stereotyping, art history and contemporary art, and aesthetics. Feminist theories first emerged as early as 1794 in publications such as A Vindication of the Rights of Women by Mary Wollstonecraft, The Changing Woman, Ain't I a Woman, Speech After Arrest for Illegal Voting, and so on. The Changing Woman is a Navajo myth that gave credit to a woman who, in the end, populated the world. In 1851, Sojourner Truth addressed women's rights issues through her publication, Ain't I a Woman? Sojourner Truth addressed the issue of women having limited rights due to men's flawed perception of women. Truth argued that if a woman of color can perform tasks that were supposedly limited to men, then any woman of any color could perform those same tasks. After her arrest for illegally voting, Susan B. Anthony gave a speech within court in which she addressed the issues of language within the Constitution documented in her publication, speech after arrest for illegal voting in 1872. Anthony questioned the authoritative principles of the Constitution and its male-gendered language. She raised the question of why women are accountable to be punished under law but they cannot use the law for their own protection. Women could not vote, own property, nor themselves in marriage. She also critiqued the Constitution for its male-gendered language and questioned why women should have to abide by laws that do not specify women. Nancy Cott makes a distinction between modern feminism and its antecedents, particularly the struggle for suffrage. In the United States she places the turning point in the decades before and after women obtained the vote in 1920, 1910 to 1930. She argues that the prior woman movement was primarily about women as a universal entity, whereas over this 20-year period it transformed itself into one primarily concerned with social differentiation, attentive to individuality and diversity. New issues dealt more with women's condition as a social construct, gender identity, and relationships within and between genders. Politically this represented a shift from an ideological alignment comfortable with the right, to one more radically associated with the left. Susan Kingsley King says that Freudian patriarchy was responsible for the diminished profile of feminism in the interwar years. Others such as Juliet Mitchell consider this to be overly simplistic since Freudian theory is not wholly incompatible with feminism. Some feminist scholarship shifted away from the need to establish the origins of family, and towards analyzing the process of patriarchy. In the immediate post-war period, Simone de Beauvoir stood in opposition to an image of the woman in the home. De Beauvoir provided an existentialist dimension to feminism with the publication of Le Duc's Sex, The Second Sex, in 1949. As the title implies, the starting point is the implicit inferiority of women, and the first question de Beauvoir asks is what is a woman? Woman she realizes is always perceived of as the other, she is defined and differentiated with reference to man and naughty with reference to her. In this book and her essay, Woman, Myth and Reality, de Beauvoir anticipates Betty Friedan in seeking to demythologize the male concept of woman. A myth invented by men to confine women to their oppressed state. For women it is not a question of asserting themselves as women, but of becoming full-scale human beings. One is not born, but rather becomes, a woman, or as Toril Moi puts it a woman defines herself through the way she lives her embodied situation in the world, or in other words, through the way in which she makes something of what the world makes of her. Therefore, woman must regain subject to escape her defined role as other, as the Cartesian point of departure. In her examination of myth, she appears as one who does not accept any special privileges for women. 
Ironically, feminist philosophers have had to extract the Beauvoir herself from out of the shadow of Jean Paul Sartre to fully appreciate her. While more philosopher and novelist than activist, she did sign one of the movement de liberation defense manifestus. The resurgence of feminist activism in the late 1960s was accompanied by an emerging literature of concerns for the earth and spirituality, and environmentalism. This in turn created an atmosphere conducive to reigniting the study of and debate on matricentricity, as a rejection of determinism, such as Adrian Rich and Marilyn French, while for socialist feminists like Evelyn Reed, patriarchy held the properties of capitalism. Feminist psychologists, such as Jean Baker Miller, sought to bring a feminist analysis to previous psychological theories, proving that there was nothing wrong with women, but rather with the way modern culture viewed them. Elaine Showalter describes the development of feminist theory as having a number of phases. The first she calls feminist critique, where the feminist reader examines the ideologies behind literary phenomena. The second Showalter calls gyno critics, where the woman is producer of textual meaning including the psychodynamics of female creativity, linguistics and the problem of a female language, the trajectory of the individual or collective female literary career and literary history. The last phase she calls gender theory, where the ideological inscription and the literary effects of the sex-slash-gender system are explored. This model has been criticized by Tor Elmoy who sees it as an essentialist and deterministic model for female subjectivity. She also criticized it for not taking account of the situation for women outside the West. From the 1970s onwards, psychoanalytical ideas that have been arising in the field of French feminism have gained a decisive influence on feminist theory. Feminist psychoanalysis deconstructed the phallic hypotheses regarding the unconscious. Julia Kristeva, Braca Edinger and Luce Irigari developed specific notions concerning unconscious sexual difference, the feminine and motherhood, with wide implications for film and literature analysis.